So we're going to give you a good review of the construction and the interior. We're going to tell you what we love, what we don't like. And remember, this is just our personal opinion. So I do a lot of research and I learn everything I can and I talk to lots of people. But in the end, um, I'm just giving you the opinions I have based on what I've learned through what I've read. And what may be important to me? may not be to you and that's okay so get the best information you can on your own research and then take a look at at what we're showing you and then make your decision but make sure you get something so you can get out there and use it so uh, this is a 33 IK which is the model number but in actual fact it's closer to 37 feet and it is a fifth wheel so what I want to start out with is talking about the frame in this trailer um, now a lot of the Cedar Creek fifths are built on a z-track frame um, which is important but the silverback is not and I just wanted to show you what that means for the silverback it means that this step is here in the storage compartment so it's not a complete pass through which is still good it still has lots of storage there and these are kind of nice and i could see uh the usefulness in that but uh, i also want to talk about right from the bottom up cedar creek is building the whole unit here so they are constructing the frame and everything the, the whole underbelly is enclosed that's the point and that's an important point to keep dirt and water and grime and things out and protect what's underneath there what I think is unique about the Cedar Creek is that this underbelly is made in panels and then those panels are attached to uh, wood pieces which are attached to the frame significance of that is is if you ever need to get in here and you need to do some maintenance on something you don't need to take the whole underbelly of your trailer off you just need to take off the panel that needs the work con to that they could slip or break or something and you could still get water in between those pieces but that could happen to any underbelly so i kind of like this system i, I think it's uh, pretty wise underneath that um, they put in a wool and glass batting insulation and there is two full layers of that and then there's also a reflective foil wrap that goes with that. Now there's pros and cons about whether that's really all that useful or not. Uh, but then uh, on top of that they're putting the aluminum frame uh, which is on 16 inch sensors and then they put their marine grade plywood on top of that which is glued down to all of that aluminum and then it's screwed down to all of that. Uh, then the rest of the flooring is applied and of course in there they're running their ducting and uh, plumbing and electrical and things like that and they're pretty much keeping that stuff pretty central uh, so it, we can show you here too um, in this aluminum frame here you can see that here in all of their joints they are gluing and screwing the joints so this is different than a lot of places and they talk about the need uh, for the aluminum frames to be double welded okay single welded no good double welded pretty darn good at that strong but the gluing and screwing allows for a little more flexibility of the frame as it moves down the road uh, so some manufacturers are going to tell you oh you don't want your trailer moving and flexing um, but Cedar Creek believes that yeah it's going to move and flex so let it move and flex so that it doesn't break so depending on what school of thought you belong to um, you might find this a better type of construction uh, i see the i see the benefits in it once this whole floor system is put together then it's bolted down to the outriggers that are on the frame um, with carriage bolts so that 
that the two are attached well together. This whole system, uh, they claim, is an R45 insulation value. So that's pretty high. Um, I just want to caution you that those numbers are often put together in different ways. So check that out a little more for yourself. So looking at the tires here, uh, you've got four tires on this trailer and they are currently a uh, ST tire at the 235 with an E load range. Um, the axles are, we believe, 8,000 pound axles. Uh, but you know, check on whatever you're buying to see, to make sure that it is indeed uh, what your truck can handle for one. and. Uh, that it could be different depending on different trailers. Uh, we've got Dexter uh, axles, brakes, and suspension. And um, these are drum brakes. And there's a new system. I'm just going to climb out of here. And you can look at the sign here to explain it. And I don't know exactly what it all means, but basically, as far as greasing and things of uh, the suspension and the axles, you don't have to do quite as much maintenance. Um, people are going to go, that's wrong or that's right. It's again, it's your own personal preference. I think what RV companies are trying to do is reduce the amount of work that needs to go into maintaining your RV. The problem with that is sometimes they're not doing the best work up front and you do need to do the maintenance. You still need to get in there and look at all of these things and make sure everything's running smoothly because after you've been pulling this down the road for a few thousand miles, things change. So you still do need to do the maintenance, but these types of things are hopefully reducing the amount of maintenance that you're going to do. So I want to talk about the walls because these are a bit different and of course pros and cons and one person will tell you it's the best and the next person will tell you it's garbage. But there's different types of walls being made out there with this nice flat fiberglass outside. This is a hung wall which means that it's not laminated. It doesn't go through the pinch rolling or the vacuuming system. They are built with a uh, high gloss fiberglass exterior piece. They have aluminum uh, structure on the inside with all the doors and windows and things framed. And like we showed you over there, that is uh, glued and screwed, so there is some flexibility in there. Then there's the wool and glass uh, batting insulation in that, inside of that, and then there's the interior paneling. So they're giving the walls an R11, um, and then these walls are mounted onto the floor of, of the base of the trailer, okay? And um, that, they say, gives these walls their strength is in the frame itself and the way it's built, not, not through its lamination process, but the actual hung wall. Um, pros about that, you know, hopefully it can flex and things, that uh, the fact that it's not a one-piece wall system, you could take off a panel and do a repair if one was needed. Uh, cons about that are that the fiberglass piece is actually glued on with, I mean, it's a super glue, it's not the standard wood stuff, right? Elmer's, it's a, it's a really good industrial glue that actually they say gets stronger with time. But it'll be glued onto those aluminum studs that are on 16 inch centers. So it is, and I have heard of people who have had problems with noticing the, a bit of a bow or a bubble or a change in between that. It, but that can all be fixed. So the roof here is um, also something they've got a, a pretty good high R rating on. They say 40 and the way they do that is they've got the, the interior piece that we'll show you when we go inside. Um, there's three layers of the wool and glass batting insulation and again another sheet of that radiant uh, foil uh, it's kind of just a big roll actually. Looks like one of those things you use to stay warm if you're stuck outside. Then they put a, a full piece of 3 8 inch OSB over top of that and then they put the rubber layer of the roof on. Now that uh, had to search for it, it was tough to find, but it is a TPO roof. Again, that's another thing that is individual. Uh, 
I prefer, Corey and I think the EPDM roof is probably a little better quality roof, but it's also uh, heavier and the TPO is widely used. Um, so I mean there's pros and cons and it all boils down to what your preference is. Uh, so it's a fully walkable roof. There is a uh, nice ladder to climb up there so you can do your maintenance and take care of everything on these. Uh, there's also a rain gutter so the roof has a bit of a shape to it to help the water shed and then it has the rain gutter and it can get the water away from the trailer as it's pouring down. Uh, you want to make sure you're checking all the caulking and everything like that when you get your trailer because ultimately that's the thing. If you can keep water out of these trailers, uh, you're in good shape. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention about the walls too. Uh, because they use the batting insulation, they actually glue that in place in between the frames so that there's no sagging and falling of that. It'll stay in place, um, which is ultimately how you maintain your R value. I mean, these are beautiful additions to a trailer like this, and these days, everybody has them. Uh, the Cedar Creek slides are insulated on all four sides. It, to keep strength and heat in place. Um, these particular slides are opposing slides, meaning they come apart uh, facing each other inside. These are big slides, they're heavy slides, and they are on a rack and pinion system. Uh, I'll climb under here. That's this piece here, which helps to support the weight of the slide and it brings it into the frame. So these are very strong hydraulic uh, rack and pinion systems. While we're under here though, we should talk about the jack system. This trailer has six hydraulic self-leveling jacks and a nice little remote system and everything so that they all come down. Super good. I mean, there's lots of different things you still need to do with jacks, like put things underneath so that they don't uh, ruin whatever the ground is you're on or sink or anything like that but they're very it's a good jack system to have and six of them on this trailer seems to be pretty good Talk about the service bay that's here so this is uh, inside your storage and this is where you can hook up your hose to drain your grain your black tanks and it's got a water hose and taps it's got all of the uh, valves for you to open. What we like about this is that this is all inside in a heated area of the trailer so uh, things are not going to get as dirty or risk freezing. And you've got this, they've also got this extra one so that you can do your winterizing so that's pretty handy as well. And if we look down next to the jack here so this is your main drain that you're going to hook your hose up to. Um, we would rather this be in an insulated area uh, but it's not and it's not unusual that that's the case so you're gonna hook everything up to here you've got your lever here and it's in a pretty pretty decent spot so that's that system you're gonna put your shore power in here um, this particular trailer has a reel for you to hook or to wind your cord up on um, but we're not getting it. You got a big heavy cord, you got it all wrapped up in here. Now you gotta wrap, unwrap the whole thing and haul it over here to plug one end in here and one end into the post. Um, so I get the point of organizing it and having it on a reel, but I just see that as a lot of extra work. But then I guess you don't, instead of having your your electrical cord just flung in there, it's organized. Just seems a little little cumbersome. So I just want to shut this door and see how it goes. That's a pretty solid door. And it's a nice latch. These lock. I like that. Uh, in here, this is where your batteries would go. Uh, I'm assuming this is where you would be putting your inverter or converter so you want to make sure you got that um, but everything is is nice and easy to reach here is your auto level system 
and that's nice because you're standing here and you can watch it all go down and see it level but there is also a remote you can use uh, so that's handy too uh, while we're out here let's also take a look if you can see above the slides there's no slide toppers on this trailer so that's a feature that I would want just to keep rain out keep needles and things off of the top of your slide but this trailer also has two one on this side and on the other cathedral slides and they're a bit pointed up there so I'm thinking that it's kind of hard to get a slide topper for that uh, and we'll show you the feature of that when we go inside. So talking about this hitch there's a lot to know about fifth wheel hitches and I'm not going to tell you all about it I don't know anything about it what I know is that Cedar Creek claims that uh, on a short bed truck they have a 90 degree turning radius with these hitches and there is a extra piece that you can add to your hitch that gives it more of an air suspension so that might be something worth looking into as well also I wanted to mention that this is a fiberglass cap that's put on so um, and then the way it's shaped allows more movement and it is cocked well. This is nice. There's a lot of clearance here. I guess I wouldn't want to go too close to the There's hitch. It's actually stand-up height. Yeah, you can do a full walk through under this. We like that feature. Uh, so here's another big storage area. Uh, so, oh, they got their spare tire in there, but you could probably put a generator in there if uh, you so chose. Um, I'm not liking this in that the only way to hold this up is these little things oh see i can't even it's hard to do two at yeah once. you can't even do two at once and they're not the best to hold it up i would worry that i'd get my head bonked into there and you know what's going to happen is somebody's going to come along and rip this out of here and break that piece so not my not the best latching system okay let's go around here and oh there's a couple more compartments let's have a look here oh two uh, 30 pound, um, I believe they're 30 pound yeah. propane tanks. So that's nice and they're in a good spot too for uh, lifting them in and out and that kind of thing. This one also has uh, exterior uh, speakers and sound system um, out here. So that's pretty nice. This is just the other door that uh, goes to that full big storage place and it is blocked or locked so I can't get in it. I also want to point out the um, windows are frameless. Some people really like them. I mean most people seem to really like them. They are all the rage and they're on all the new trailers. Um, we can look at it inside. It's not my favorite thing for airflow um, but lots of people like them and they do they do look good. I'm not denying that. There's another electrical outlet here and for your satellite TV. I like this door for some reasons. <laughs> uh, I like that it's a friction door, so it's not catching in the wind, it's not getting slammed around. I like this screen door a lot because it has a screen and it has a sort of a, a plasticky kind of window thing. So if you wanted to leave your main door open have the light coming through because if you see there's no window in the door that's something I don't like um, you can keep this in without actually losing heat well I guess it would be losing your air conditioning so I do like that and this is the new more ride step system because these are pretty high trailers um, and these the step system is very sturdy aluminum and very popular on all the new trailers but I'm not sure how easy it is or isn't I'm not going to put it in but I think you just turn these little pieces in here the whole thing lifts up our concern in doing something like this is that we would be down here at the bottom trying to push this up and it's probably a bit heavy I think for us so for a taller person that could be pushing from up there just something that we'd have to figure out this this is a good steps but I think that we might have some challenges with it and we'd have to figure that out um, good grab bar 
and oh the awning system this will be an electric awning and they are I don't see it there though generally these are lit underneath I would I'd have to ask the salesperson about that to make sure but whatever you do if you're buying a new trailer today make sure it has that LED lighting in there because it's just so nice when you're sitting outside to have that lighting you can I believe even get this in a full body paint though if you want but this is a very nice gel coat fiberglass with decals mm -hmm.